Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Guns in Radio podcast. And now, give it up for your host, Chris Caputo and Dustin Bones. It's episode number 89 of the Guns in Radio podcast. Uh, coming at you from the World Wide Web, wherever you listen to your podcast. Spotify, Apple, Google. We're on like 20 different things. Um, All of them. You know, whether it be obscure or current, we're there. So if you, yeah, there's no excuse to not listen to us. We're even on cassette tape now, I found out. You can actually tape us on cassette tape and listen to us on your walk, man. So you can pretend it's the decade when all of this music that we like to review came out. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're also on uh, available on, on 45-inch vinyl, so you can listen each episode. You have to pay $5 oh, for the vinyl. Um, they have 87 45s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's what like, the, it's, what was the it's toy the vibe. They had? Back in the day when you would crank the, the toy oh. and it would play the music. You know what I'm talking about? Autograph? Yeah, that. A there photograph. Was. Oh, I thought you meant like one of those scary clowns. Oh, that's what it did. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it popped. Okay, yeah. That's what like, I was ja- thinking jack of the box. It's called the Jack of the Box. <laughs> that's what I was thinking about, but then I forgot about the, the, well, because the, the scary the, clown Yeah, and the, the Curly Fries restaurant stole that. Uh, <laughs> We got Taryn Robin from the Nothing Lasts Forever podcast, another GNR podcast in the uh, the podcast universe here in our little own, I guess, niche niche sphere, as they say. And and we're even more niche than that. I mean, we don't consider ourselves a Guns N' Roses podcast. We consider ourselves a November Rain podcast. That's right. You guys specifically cover November Rain. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you're and, all, and, and we pull and anything in, in like kind of what he said, like in the November rain universe. And, and we take a lot of liberties with that. So we're able to pull in <laughs> all kinds of really dumb bullshit, in, you know. And uh, yeah, but we do talk about Guns N' Roses every episode, though. That, that <laughs> tends to be the, the primary thing in well, the November sure, rain sure. Yeah, universe. Yeah. Well, clearly, but, it's their song. I mean, I mean, it would be hard not to talk about Guns N' Roses, at least occasionally. <laughs> but yeah, that we've, def- <laughs> we've definitely gone down some weird roads here. Yeah. Like, well, I think so- that what, one of my favorite things that came up was that Slash has genital warts. No, we have not <laughs> talked about that. <laughs> yeah, oh, we God. have. <laughs> <laughs> he put, it was in his fake autobiography. Slash. It was in his fake autobiography. He slash wrote, slash wrote it in Tony his Boza. He, did. he included it. <laughs> He's such a moron. All right. Uh, I was thinking about the ahead. music video, like the, the the character Slash plays in the music video has genital warts. Is what I thought you. <laughs> no, maybe, but... but real Slash does too. You, there's no cure for that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sucks. Oh man, I hope this is. The... Well, what what do, what do I it go does. with that? <laughs> I could go all kinds of places with that. <laughs> like, first you know, of all, I would still sleep with him. <laughs> <laughs> of all the directions I expected this interview to go, the last direction I was expecting was the way it goes when Caputo and I are alone. And... This, is, this is pretty on brand. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I listened to one about the erotic slash stream. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Tara's always trying to talk about shit like that. <laughs> Robin, it's but we relevant. do often if have, ask if people, I have an erotic slash dream and then record the next day, like, of course, I'm gonna bring it up. So, yeah. does he keep the top hat on? Is he wearing the shades? Is he currently oh. smoking a cigarette during? Yeah, definitely got the that's, cigarette during, that's for sure. I, you know, look, first of all, we never had full intercourse. Um, <laughs> she's talking about her dream, just I need <laughs> everyone to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> full disclosure, anyways. We talk a lot about Slash being a himbo. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the classic example of a himbo, because he's kind of, you know, he's great. He's pretty, but, you know, he's mm. a little just like, he's not super smart. But um, I'm a simpleton. But uh, the one thing we've talked about in uh, the, if there was a chance of sleeping with Slash, that there'd be a shit ton of snakes around and how that's, and that's a that's deal a breaker no for Robin. That's but not break. only is our snakes not a deal breaker for me, neither are the genital warts. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there are worse things in life. I mean, you'd you never have to worry about getting genital warts again. I mean, hey, that's a, that is a great spin. That is a great I like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> strengths based approach. You only get it once. <laughs> <laughs> so so okay, I got your feelings on Slash. Let's talk about Duff for a second. Duff oh, is, by the way, that's that's one of Robin's favorite what subjects. It, is what were you gonna say about Duff? I was gonna say we haven't really introed the show like we normally do. Oh, but yeah, Duff, the song of the day that we're gonna review later on is gonna be Superman by Duff. What do you guys think about Duff? Oh, Duff is just sweet, beautiful Duff. Like he's just like kind of like Duffles. He's like the um, (laughs) he's like just like everyone's favorite. Uh, He's he kind of like has gives off just like your your childhood pet vibe. Like he's like a dog. We call Duff the dog. He's like he's like a golden retriever. He's like like, like a golden retriever with a former alcohol problem. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. What is that Duff song? I, Robin, have you heard I don't of know this Duff song. Solo? Like... That's Duff Solo. We, we, we haven't gotten into that, guys. Yeah. Okay. Uh... The other thing, though, about Duff is Tara and I are both, um, we're from the, or Tara is born or is from the Pacific Northwest, and um, that's where her and I met. So we also love Duff because of his uh, Pacific Northwest ties. And, like, he's just kind yeah. of a true grunge punk gutter punk. And, like, yeah, uh, he's legit. I love it. He doesn't get enough. Mm-hmm credit for that you know well i he's think very he's very tall but... and blonde we already said that yeah he's oh, very yeah. tall he's sinewy <laughs> he looks like he does yoga no that man i'd hate to fight his daughters he's... are pretty annoying I, I don't really like the influencer thing yeah <laughs> like you don't want to be an influencer just because your dad was a, is a rock star like that's i don't uh, know that seems like the fast path to it to me you're right you're right i'm just jealous <laughs> we <laughs> I'm about it. We're also 15 i'm like talking shit about children <laughs> no shit children well that's okay on this show children are to be talked shit about uh, <laughs> say, they talk shit about us so it's all right. they do deserve it they do. They really all do. this they current are. love and war oh uh, well we've talked about um duff mckagan and uh chris novoselic have famously gotten a tough guy or a tall guy a tall guy fight, a tall guy fight. <laughs> just like just being two <laughs> giant dudes that got Poking in a fight each other and they're like trees with the 92 swaying in the wind yeah, How would that work? Because you wouldn't be able to get close. Neither nobody could get close to the other one to hit them because their arms are so long. Yeah, they're just I would have so loved long. to have seen it. It would look like <laughs> one the of those thing is, Chris like Novoselic <laughs> is like five inches taller than Duff. That guy is. That guy must have like a pituitary gland issue. He's like <laughs> six foot nine, right? Six yeah, seven. Do you think they How were big? tallest guys at ninety two VMAs? Probably. Yeah. How big is Shaquille Who O'Neal? Taller then, well, yeah, like, I'm sure there were basketball sure. players that were taller than Chris Novoselic at the 92 VMAs. Probably made him really insecure. You see the guy around. Shaq is 7'1", so Holy he's not far. If he's 6'8", he's not that much smaller than Shaq. Jesus Christ. He's, he's a really six, tall, eight? thin, white guy. Oh, my God. Oh. Which is I just wonder like, how his health is now. Like, tall guys, they don't, yeah. They don't really have issues. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Their hearts blow up. And he's also uh, a Republican. Oh. Fun. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. We're not supposed to talk politics. This guy's from Missouri. <laughs> My bad. My we bad. do talk about politics, so we're we from can't Los help Angeles. it. We're in a bubble. <laughs> yeah. uh, but wait, what is this Duff song? Is it on his own um, like uh, a solo album? Well, it's called Superman, and it's on one of his many solo albums. How yeah. many solo albums does uh, Duff have? Not many, actually. This is actually from, uh, was supposed to be a second solo album. It got basically shelled, canceled because of some record label merger bullshit. And then he ended up re-recording it with his other side band, Loaded. Yes. I like I've, I recently finished the Duff McKagan autobiography. Have you read that? I have a copy, but I have not read it yet. It's, it's so not easy yet. and other lies. That's what's called. Yeah. yeah. It's so easy and other lies. Mm-hmm. I watched the movie thing on Netflix thinking it would be uh, a good supplement for it, and I found I was wrong in that. There is a what? movie no, about you, it? Can you elaborate on what you just said? There was a Netflix, uh, or, or maybe it's Amazon Prime. I'm not sure. It, uh, it was but, on Netflix, I think, at one point. But wow. yeah, Robin, this is your this is your department. You missed it. You're wild. It's not. Wait, the so same they made they did book. wait. So they did like a like a documentary on the Duff book or on Duff. Uh, and not it's, it's hard to describe because it's basically Duff sitting in a stool playing an acoustic set, kind of playing on his guitar while he tells stories. That sounds awful. 
<laughs> it, it's I, I made it sound bad. And if you're a GNR <laughs> fan, it's 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 definitely uh, you got to be a fan to get through it, probably. But uh, I mean, is he doing is he doing GNR songs? I mean, he sings the one GNR song, right? Or is there more than one song he sings? Uh, he doesn't really get into songs too much. They're more background music while he, he tells just the story. The guitar and sound you stories. see pictures. Oh, and I stuff probably gotta like watch it. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna watch that. Of yeah, course. The book wasn't that bad. So I read um, Slash by Slash and Anthony Boza back to back mm -hmm. with Duff. So Slash has his autobiography that was co-written with someone. And then I read uh, Duff's book back to back. And Duff's book is good. It's well written. And did Duff, did Robin, did Duff write, did he have a ghostwriter like Slash? Well, not listed. <laughs> Slash has I, like, I speculated that Slash is illiterate. Uh, <laughs> Duff also is famously went back to college, like got his like Game MBA and all yeah. this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he, he's pretty cool. Money yeah. in Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, I does forgot he have, that. Did he have Starbucks money? Yeah, because yeah. he went back to Seattle and like got a hot tip to invest in this small coffee company. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, I love um, that and Amazon too, I think. He totally. Did. Duff's autobiography is just him like going from a rock star going into like a basic bro. Like him like evolving <laughs> from like this like And then he like circles back. Dying and then... <laughs> He invests in stocks, go back to school, moves with home, gets dot. Like, it's like, so just back to the boring basics. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. He lives well, his uh, life. He's happy, I'm sure. Yeah. What about, uh, what about other GNR members? What do you guys think about? I'm going to spit some names at you, okay? And we, we, we ain't got time to sit here all night and go through the whole roster. But I'm going to throw some names at you. You tell me the first thing that comes to mind, okay? Oh, okay. Word association. Well, yeah, we'll start simple. Dizzy Reed. We love Dizzy oh, on the bongos. Love Dizzy on the keys. Dizzy on the bongos. We love yeah. the D man. <laughs> love the Diz. Mm -hmm. Matt Sorum. I think he's a fantastic drummer, and I think that a lot of a lot of reason for me, User Illusion works is because of him. I think he, I think he ties everything together. Yeah. I think they gave him a perm. That's for damn. <laughs> Yeah, to make him look more like Steven Adler. That's my theory. So we I have a theory that he, they didn't want people to know that he was not forum. Adler. Yeah. <laughs> what about, uh, oh, Izzy Stradlin, an obvious one we yes. haven't discussed. The coolest cool guy ever. We got a complicated relationship with Izzy, uh, but we I consider him like the normal one. Okay, I think yeah. He's the backbone, and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's the normal one, but he's probably like the ultimately like the coolest guy in the band. It's I agree. The band. He doesn't have to try. He just is. Yeah. No trying. Yeah. The is. The is. All right. Isabel. Cur <laughs> Curveball time. Buckethead. Oh. Oh, oh. Hey, so someone told Ooh. me, and maybe you guys know about this. Did Buckethead do a porn in a chicken coop? <laughs> no. no, he watched. Okay, porn. that's my. Okay, that's he my. Watched word porn in the chicken coop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, so he watches porn from a chicken coop? Is that what you think, Robin? He watched porn mm -hmm. while inside a chicken the coop. The chicken coop. Well, he did all kinds of stuff in the chicken coop. Yeah, while while he was recording the guitar parts for Chinese Democracy. Yeah, Buckethead is. So he didn't. He didn't make a porn in the chicken coop. Okay. Okay, I was confused. Not that I we know. Sure, I hope I, not. Because I'll mean... tell you guys a secret. I searched for that porn and couldn't find it, but found some <laughs> weird stuff instead. <laughs> we'll, ta we'll tag in Rick Dunsford to go look for it. Uh, oh, yeah. Rick <laughs> he'll, uh, if anybody finds it, it's going to be him. <laughs> um, hey, I dug deep, guys. That thing doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so like something on. easy that you could fake. Like, like a I deep mean, easily. Yeah, a deep peek yeah. of Buckethead at a chicken coop. Oh, or Buckethead just like anyone Spanish. could be Buckethead. Like, <laughs> yeah. why are oh, people what... assuming his identity? Yeah, Buckethead yeah. is there, a hard one. Five yeah. Bucketheads, for all we know. Yeah, actually, I'm very impressed. Like, at least like I haven't done like a extensive research, but it's very hard to find a picture of his face. He's done a good job at keeping it tight yeah. under the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A weird okay. individual, though. Yeah. Uh, what about Tommy Stinson? Okay, I, I want to take this. So the replacements yeah. are one of my favorite bands of all time. And when when Tommy was brought into Guns N' Roses, it was a shock to people in like the punk community and replacements fans. And it, it, you know what? I still think it's bad shit and weird. I love Tommy. Rest in peace to his brother Bobby. Um, cool, cool dude. <laughs> in cool yeah. band. 
Yeah, I have no comment. I don't really know. So, yeah. Do you have an idea what Default I just said, Tara? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. What about DJ Ashba? That's another device. That guy looks one. like that guy. Oh, I, I'm just going to say one word douchebag. <laughs> 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 and you know what? I think that I could probably use that to describe every anyone else. You haven't said Stevie Adler yet. So oh, I, I was, I was never. I would never call Stevie a douchebag. Oh, yeah. Stevie's said, nice. Like, hey. Oh, so I know. I would never call him. I would never say anything bad about Stevie. Uh, he's harmless. I mean, <laughs> I think if we're talking about any of the players from the Chinese democracy era, I would be like, because they're, they're all just like new metal nerds and it's just it's a bad look it was a bad era and um axel i would say didn't do a great job of picking these dudes so huh um what about bumblefoot now he was nice we don't really know much about yeah we don't know much about bumblefoot but i do think it's funny that they replaced bucket i think it's incredible that they found a bumblefoot to replace buckethead it just like does does bumblefoot wear a, a mask too no, he wears. Uh, he wore a fez for a little while. Oh boy! Didn't he really? wear a fez for a little while? Am I remembering that right? <laughs> wow, we haven't really well, gotten deep into. Worse. Maybe we haven't gotten deep into Chinese. At least I haven't got deep into Chinese. Democracy we, we do have era. a Chinese democracy episode planned, but recently I listened to Chinese democracy in full, and I do it from time to time. And I texted Robin, "Hey, I just listened to Chinese democracy in full. Like, ask me anything," and she just responds. No, <laughs> like she wanted nothing to do with it. So Robin, Robin hasn't gone down the Chinese democracy um, road with me yet, but she will. No, but it's it is a great road to go down. I, I love it. it. I love, I love it. it. Oh yeah. There's there's so it much is. good Chinese democracy like lore. Um, I'm really oh, yeah. waiting to tell Tara about like the Dr Pepper. Did I tell you the Dr Pepper issue? No. I don't. Oh, oh, you don't know about the Dr. Oh, Pepper fucker? <laughs> yeah. oh Dr. Pepper starting to fight with Axel Rose. <laughs> we recreated that when we first started this show. On really? Earth. Oh, no, I can't wait to hear this. Why don't you guys go tell the Dr. Pepper? It's tight. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Chinese Democracy had been in production for, what, 10 years 15, or so? 15 F- years or something, yeah. Fucking forever. And yeah. nobody ever thought it was going to come out. And Dr. Pepper said somewhere that if uh, Axl Rose would release Chinese Democracy uh, by a certain date, that they would give everybody in America a free Dr. Pepper. (laughs) Dr. Pepper is tight. I had no idea. And this was like pre-Twitter? Yeah. Like, how was he getting this word out? I don't remember. How did they get the word out? Probably like online. I was going to say and then, probably like a press release or something. Okay, so this obviously. But then Axel Axel. got mad about that. Did no, he a... released the album. You don't say. Oh, he, oh, he released it. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, album. Actually like, Fuck America. They're not getting free Dr. Pepper on my watch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> put the album they, out. That'd be petty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's very Axel Rose. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's what happened. They uh they uh released the album and then Dr. Pepper wasn't expecting it and uh uh so they 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 kept their word, but you only but the way they did it, you only had one day to claim your free Dr. Pepper, your Chinese democracy free Dr. Pepper, and you had to go to a website and back then the internet wasn't what it is now, so that website got flooded and uh oh, it- stopped working. And it was a big wow. clusterfuck. And it, that, yeah. Oh, okay. So they did have to follow through. Oh, wow. wow. I didn't That's know that. That's very, no idea. Cooler. Well, I guess they didn't have to. I mean, I, mean, I don't think there were. Was there any lawsuits over it or anything? I, don't... I think so. I think, they, I think they tried Axel to Rose definitely sued them. Yeah. Yeah, we say the devil works hard, but Axel Rose is wor- Lawyers. <laughs> Lawyer works harder. They work oh, the yeah. hardest. <laughs> that guy's got a team of the lawyers. A good team. <laughs> Yeah, he's got They're to. Busy. Well, I was I noticing to these days. I was noticing in your background with your Scooby Doo, uh, and I know you guys just recently, a uh, couple of episodes ago, did a uh, where you guys talked about Axl Rose and Scooby Doo. Have you actually uh-huh. got to watch the cartoon yet? So we have not, and we're having a hard time figuring out where to watch it. So I, I looked, I looked for Boomerang, and. 
I was like, okay, like I'll sign up for this because it actually has some like cool content, uh, like old cartoons. And and actually, Robin and I went through the plots of other Scooby Doo and Guess Who episodes, and they're all kind of equally batshit. Like it sounds like a really good show. So I went online trying to figure out how to find it, and I couldn't find that episode. And then I forgot until just now. I look at this background every day on my computer too. (laughs) You want to watch it all the way through? Sure. We got time for that, Chris? <laughs> Hell yeah. We got lots of time. We make that happen? Hell yeah. Uh, do we you thought have to... we watched the clips and thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, what we'd have to do is we'd have to send it to you or post it on like a private YouTube video or something so we could all stream it and uh, sync up that way. Is that cool, you guys? Yeah, if, if there's a link. I mean, like, I'm pretty um, much a Luddite when it comes to working this com- my computer. So if it's well, easy. Uh, Caputo, do you want to work on that, or you want me to work on that, and you continue the show? Um, we can both. I, I'm getting it right now, actually. Hang on. Oh, okay. Let's see. Well, then I'll so continue. Can, yeah, we'll throw I'll up on D transfer. Entertaining yeah. some folks. Yeah, hit us with more questions. Yeah, well, I like that word association. Was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, right? we're not done. There's more people. <laughs> oh yeah, there's plenty of more people. We could go all well, night. Right. Uh, but you haven't come to, you know. Slash. Axel Rose. Well, well we, we already talked, talked about, about Slash. We talked about Slash, yeah, and Axel's going to come up regardless of who we talk about. I was yeah, pretty mm-hmm. sure. Uh, and we well, did talk about, about Steven Adler. What about Gilby? I mean, I, well, I, I, yeah, Gilby. Oh, and yeah. Gil. We love Gil. Yeah, Gilby. We have <laughs> Gil, Gil uh, liked one of our tweets recently or something, and I like, got, got excited about it. Robin didn't think it was as cool as I did. Oh, I thought I, it was. I don't know. Like during Gill's brief tenure, I he was harmless, you know, innocuous even, and you know he did he did the job. He did yeah. those tours. I have a question. I think he did it well. Do you all think that they picked Gilby because he kind of looked like Iz- Izzy? <laughs> yeah, uh, possibly. Oh possibly. Yeah, kinda. He looks just like him. <laughs> Now, if you Google Izzy Stradlin and you go into images, if you scroll down, uh, not even really all that far, there's always somebody's got a picture of Richard Fortas in there. <laughs> oh, right. Fortas. Yeah. And Fortas is the current rhythm guitar player, right? Yeah. And I really believe that most casual GNR fans believe that that is Izzy. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> so we have to cop up that we thought, we didn't realize that Izzy wasn't in November rain because we knew while. Izzy recorded on. We knew Izzy recorded on Use Your Illusion. We didn't realize that he didn't do like the tours and the videos. So I mean, it, we were many viewings in a November raid when we we're like, <laughs> Robin. Yeah. Robin found out. I mean, it was kind of a dark, dark. But I'll, I'll, we also started out like so. We started doing this podcast in what October and September, um, October. Yeah, our idea. Okay, we met, so we, we had met this idea. Axel in October, so I think we started in September. Oh, yeah, we started. Met September. him like during Corona and shit. 10, 10, yeah. 20, 20, the day we met Axel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so we man. started and we shit. thought we were going to watch November Rain every day for 30 days and then release an episode every day of November. And we were just like, that was like very fucking hard. And um, we didn't really know. I didn't really know much about Guns N' Roses in September, like barely anything. So Tara knew some, but now we're like, I'm just like so fucking deep. <laughs> oh yeah, it's and, and the thing is, and I've I've said this to Robin. And you I know, times it. are hard. No Coronavirus regret. has been hard. Like my mental health, like it's just it's been a challenging time. And the joy that this that Guns and Roses and this podcast and just the Guns and Roses November Ray universe brings to me. <laughs> I mean, I, I I truly believe like the past six months, I feel like I got through because of Guns and Roses. And um, you know, I. I, I'm so glad it's such a vast subject because yeah. it really is like we've we've barely scratched the surface, even though it feels like we've we've talked about everything. Yep. What about the sequel videos like Estranged? Oh or yeah. Don't Cry? Uh, well, the Estranged video is a tie-in to how we met Axel. So yes. we can, you know, we we uh, we have I think a two-part episode on Estranged. So did you all have you all read the story by Del James? Without uh, you, by Del James. I have not. Yeah, Ooh. it's mm. it's long. It's something. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It makes a lot of all of it makes sense, except for a strange. A strange makes no fucking sense. Hey, at see, all. the strange makes perfect sense to me. A strange <laughs> makes no sense. Robin hates a strange as equally as I love it. I 
I think the song that is bad, like I don't really like. Yeah, song. you don't like it strange. I don't know. Like, what kind the of video doesn't that make any sense. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh come it's on! It's beautiful. It I know it's strange. As many don't just, like it, but Axl Rose like... considers that Guns N' Roses' best song. Yeah, I guess it's like the deep cut, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, the video is crazy. The dolphin. I, there's so many things. I don't even know what. It, like, where do we even start? It's so right. insane. Uh, it, it it is. A, I'll give you that. It's a batshit crazy video. Love it. <clears throat> it's cool. Like the thing in comparison to November Rain, we talk about it. It's like okay, November Rain was high budget. It was totally like out of you know, it was ridiculous. All the complicated plot, the all this yeah. stuff, and they just he. It's like he was like, okay, let's do that and multiply it by seventeen. Like it's just like that much yeah. more fucking extreme. Like a strange, yeah. a strange. The video was twice as expensive. The song is even longer. The song is even longer than November Rain. The, you know, it has a strange is unique for a single. There's no chorus. Like I, I just think it was such like a. That was like Axl Rose, pinnacle artiste. And I do think, you know, they reached an apex of the songwriting. And like I said, Axl Rose considered it, considers it their best song. But that was probably the beginning of the end for the band. Because the band did not want to be a band that did songs like Estranged. Yeah. And made videos like Estranged. Oh, the video. But Axl he, absolutely insisted. Axl turns into a dolphin at the end. Like, literally. <laughs> that, well, <laughs> or like, he's like dolphin himself. Dolphin. There's a dolphin wearing a flannel at the end, which is, is worth yeah, it. Yeah, the dolphin's like, I don't know, that cool, was, That's you worth you $4 million. You like that dolphin. Don't you like I the dolphin? I love that dolphin. <laughs> I like that. It, I'm so happy that it exists in pop culture. So I guess, mm-hmm. like, I guess because of that dolphin, Estranged is the best video ever. Yeah. Thank you. Someday we got to find that particular dolphin. Somebody out there li- that's listening to this show knows exactly which dolphin that yeah, was. That dolphin's probably in like a like a shitty zoo in Texas. Can you see that? It's like I think it's like a puppet. <laughs> no, that was a real that was a real dolphin. They didn't have a dolphin Whoa. puppet technology like that in 1992. No, not back then. No, that's... that was a real dolphin. Had okay. to be. We'll Don't find out. Sense. Definitely, <laughs> probably took it from the San Diego Zoo. Oh, well, there's uh, well, that's, yeah. There's your tape. Yeah, making, there we go. <laughs> uh, the tape making the fucking videos. Yep, I've watched those, but they don't have a. Or they I will have seen a strange one. Hmm. The videos I've only seen behind the scenes of "Don't Cry" and "November Rain." But those I've seen, seen them uh, many joints ago. I don't remember anything. They leave a lot to be desired. <laughs> sure. I know that the the behind the scenes of "November Rain." one that we watch is like just a like it's a, just a little bit longer than the video it's like yeah it's long yeah oh. it really doesn't it doesn't really tell you much um that you can't like deduce from watching the video or like reading the wiki but i guess that's you know the point of wikipedia these days oh we didn't have the wikipedia back then back then yeah, yeah. right it was like it was just like a condensed like a cliff's notes so what got you guys to looking at this music video and saying this is the music video that we're going to have an entire series built around. Like, wow. Yeah, that great this. question. So have, I don't know if you've heard of uh, uh, former President Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Uh, much so to my dismay. He made a statement in, that came out, or like he, it was... It, it was, was in a book. It was written in Sarah Huckabee Sanders' book that Donald Trump believed that November Rain was the greatest music video of all time. And Tara texted me and she's like, what what and i said you know what probably it is i think it might be so so trump trump would sit staffers down and and force them to watch the video <laughs> and then like and like look at them and like, it's the best right this is the best music video of all time like a like a weird dog <laughs> and it, it, like it, it was <laughs> such like a significant thing that it made it into her book book I remember he made it into Sarah Huckabee Sanders' book that he would do this to staffers. And apparently, it's kind of side note, he would also do this with Bloodsport, but it was a edited version that was just the fighting scene. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically, it, you know, I immediately see this and I'm thinking, man, I agree with President Trump on something finally. And this is, you know, I feel a little embarrassed that I agree with this guy on anything. And um, because I mean, I was a Guns N' Roses fan. And um, in fact, before lockdown, 
the very last karaoke song I ever sang was November Rain. And yeah. I always wanted to do it. It was because it's nine minutes long. You know, that's kind of a karaoke faux pas to do a nine minute long song. But I was like, yeah. you know what? And it's got a lot okay. of like instrumental parts, too, yeah. which is oh, also yeah. faux pas. Yeah, me, me and the guy I was fucking at the time did it together. And <laughs> it, you know, lockdown happened. And then like, you know, it was, a, it was a dark time. And then November rain kind of like lifted us, lifted us out. Yeah. And we just decided, okay, there's only one way to figure out if it's the greatest music video of all time. And we'll just watch, it, watch over it over and over it's, again. It's, and the our, our first episode that we recorded, we hadn't watched it for 15 years. And now right. I don't know, like I'm probably in the fifties. I mean, it's, yeah, so do you, is it part of the ritual of recording the show that you have to watch the music video? It depends on the episode. So if it's a side episode or a planned episode, you know, if like this episode is going to be about uh, Estranged, for example, or what's one we did recently, Robin, that wasn't a November Rain video? Uh, we've we've watched some live performances and stuff like that. So. Yeah, live at Saskatoon. So if there's, if we kind of have something like else the, to talk about that we can tie in, we don't yeah. watch it. We really, we really try to watch it. And, um, more often than not. And the last episode we recorded was with a, a special guest and we watched it. Yeah. Yeah. With nice. yeah. So you show people the video, like how troll two fans show people the movie troll two. Actually <laughs> analogy. Yeah. But yeah, it, it is like, we haven't done enough guest slots. We need to start doing them more. Cause I think people are getting really sick of me and Robin's like dumb banter, but um, we try to bring in people who are unfamiliar with it. So like bringing in my like rocker friends, isn't quite what we're going for. Right. Um, I think so we want it all though. I think, but, but, I but like this last people... person, this last person we brought in is a black dude from Atlanta and like, you know, so his <laughs> take on November Ray, you know, he loved it. Yeah. But he was coming at it from a really different perspective, like culturally. Yeah. And, and it's cool to see what people like he, notice. I want to say in, there, he loved to. it. Yeah, he loved the. Um, That's gonna be a fun episode. He loved but... Axel's outfits. Yeah, I, I don't want to give anything away, but has anybody uh, has anybody pointed out like this got said to me once by because I'm in a lot of nerd groups, but has anybody said to you guys the theory of the church is a TARDIS? No, That's, no, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and it makes what? sense. Okay. The church is a TARDIS. Bring it, it on. Sense. I don't know much I get, about TARDIS, I get, but I know I, what you mean because. It's a I Doctor Who thing. Saying. Is this because yeah, yeah, I know that. Is this because it... Slash walks out? And... When Slash walks out of the church, it's clearly a very itty bitty tiny church. But when he walks into it, it's right. huge, huge and massive. Yeah. Right. Well, it's a I, big I, I feel like in our research, and I think that that would have come up. Robin, well, you've never crossed that. Crossed well, it? we know that they. Okay. Well, in November Rain. I uh, like history, I guess, lore, whatever. So the inside of the church and the outside when they're, at, well, not the outside, but when they're getting, leaving the wedding, that's at a church that's actually down the street from my Saint house Andrew. here. And we've been he there, there, right? It's just like some big Catholic church. But Axel had a dream of sla a shot of Slash doing a guitar solo in a cool field is what right. he said. A very cool field. And you, did, did you say, Robin, is it a, did, did he have an actual dream or was it like Martin Luther King, I have a dream? Uh, a vision, I guess, like in his vision oh, for this boy. video. Okay. Oh, and okay. Uh, they couldn't find a cool field. So they went out to, it's in New Mexico and they had to build that, this mm -hmm. facade here. So it's a, it's yeah. like a total prop facade. I don't think there's anything on the inside except for like. Yeah. I, I don't think that that, that like juxtaposition of little church. <laughs> but it church is... was intended to be like read into too much. Yeah. I, I, but at least I appreciate this deep theory, but he clearly is like time traveling. I mean, it's all um, a dream. Is that clearly time traveling. It's not time traveling. <laughs> it's all a dream though. At the end of the day. Right. Right. So it's not supposed to make sense because it is all a dream. Yeah. It's there like blurring. Go. It's blurring like dream with reality. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Well, he, more slash as well. he has erotic dreams about slash. <laughs> 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 oh well at least we know what we all have in common in this life <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we found the thing i've been having i quit smoking race. weed no this is why i quit smoking weed and I'm you sorry. have really vivid dreams when you quit smoking weed and so I, i'm having nutty dreams every night and since i don't get laid anymore they're about sex a lot i, I don't think that that's unusual <laughs> <laughs> I never said it was unusual. I said the exact opposite. She really doesn't like to hear about my erotic 
live streams. <laughs> and I'm over here trying to dive into it because this is great radio. So. This is good someone, content, maybe. Someone did a comment. I think this is like, a, I think this is even a quote from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And he said, dreams are like pictures. If I'm not in them or they're not about me, I don't want to know about them. Yeah. <laughs> You're usually there, Robin. Okay. Oh, oh. Not in a sex movie. Well, I don't know. Okay. I was about to say, this is an interesting turn. <laughs> this is taken. I mean, that's a true show of best friendship when you're present. Uh, that's, that's a show. In, in your dream, giving you, uh, cheering you on? Yeah. I mean, I would like to think if I was having a sex dream with uh, Slash, that Caputo would be there going, <laughs> go get him, buddy. Uh, uh, way <laughs> to go. Fighting I'll the snakes, the huh? Room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and we'll bring it up again, all right? Until the next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll bring it up. Uh, well, actually, I was trying to get us a little uh, mood setting music for this uh, for this uh, interview, but it's not uh, wanting to work. Oh well. Every week we, there's a technical difficulty here. <laughs> yeah, we do our best to pretend we're not having any, and it's just this show is run to is held to. Oh. Oh. Oh, there we go. oh, there we go. You guys, I have to get up to get a computer charger. I'm so sorry. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah. No worries. No worries. Okay. Well, uh... You can see the full background there. Oh, yeah. Let's check out that for a second. Let's turn off that so, mute. Did you guys watch the whole thing, though? Yeah, we're, uh, we're in the process of uploading it to a way that we can send it to you guys so that we can all watch it together. Mm-hmm. So we talked about how Axel looks like um, it's a flattering version, cartoon it's, Axel. It is a flattering version because we've seen him recently. Should we and, talk you know, it was, it was, his physical appearance was, I will say, startling. Okay, so what we're about to hear, guys, is probably the last known Axel sighting in the wild. Yeah. In over I would, a year. I agree with that. I mean, like, even since they, they haven't even had any shows for a while. So I'm really interested here. Did you guys get a picture or anything? No, 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 no. no. <sighs> All so right. What happened? This is what happened. I'm really into a strange to the point where I'm, you know, obsessed with my ex. I'm, I'm texting him quotes from a strange constantly. It's just like a really bad time for me. And he's not responding. I think he eventually like, blocked my number. I mean, and... I probably would. I mean, <laughs> I I'm just, just being real. Not like, I'm just being I, a strange real. is not really the thing that you send. It was a people. mistake. Okay, I made a lot of everybody mistakes. fucks up sometimes. I mean, Shit happens. Always. So <laughs> in in my like in my like deep obsession with a strange, you know, we we find out that the video is filmed partially at his actual home that he, from what we hear, actually still lives in. Yep. And I have a group of friends back home in Eugene who are huge GNR fans. He's like punk rock dudes. And they came to visit LA shortly before lockdown. And they all went out to, they all went out there. They had, they got the address and went out to like take pictures at his gate. I didn't join oh, them because nice. I was working at the time, but they had the actual, they had the address. So yeah. I, I, so Tara says, to let's go. And we, I've lived in LA now for 10 years and I, I don't go like celebrity hunting or like sightseeing. Oh. So I thought that was like, no, she I'm, was not gonna go. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go drive by this person's house, drive yeah, by Axel's creepy. house. Yeah. It's creepy. It's yeah. dumb. Um, I mean, I we, would feel creepy about doing it, but I mean, yeah, but it's I, far away though. There's a gate. Well, I, I was thinking that... he lives in Malibu. It was a nice day. It, you know, like it was, it was, we were nothing to do. So I was just like, let's yeah, go to Malibu to do. and drive so, up the Canyon and see the house. Like it was it seemed harmless, right? We, we compromised compromise. in that. I'm, I, he lives by a bike trail. So we, I was like, let's go on a bike ride. We'll be it. We'll, conveniently bike past his house um but we'll also have a great day it was a beautiful day in malibu it's quarantine it's coronavirus like we're just with something to do right and, and, and like, never in never in this conversation never. did we consider or discuss the possibility of meeting him I want to make that really really clear that yep. never was on our radar it was like it let's go check out the scenery from estranged yep yep okay a landscape and, and, mm -hmm. And so we biked that way. And I, uh, Tara was on an e-bike. I was on a regular yeah, bike. I'm not, it's uphill. It's it's like, it was two miles up a canyon. And uphill. It, Robin's very physically fit. I'm uh, not. And so she's on a regular bike and I'm on an e-bike. So I'm ahead of her. Yeah. And we're like approaching, approaching the house, getting ready to like 
I don't know. You can see the back, like it's in, you know, it's, you can see that it's there. It's like on the top of this, it's per, 360 views of Malibu on the top of this Beautiful. hill. It's, on it's a gorgeous. Yeah. And so we're going up and Tara somehow like speed, well, she speeds past me cause she's on her e-bike and I'm like churning up and we go past one of the neighbors. So we pass one of the neighbor's house and a neighbor is out and we're biking up this hill. There's other bikers out there too. Yeah. They are like in there. Like so we didn't, it wasn't like weird stuff. that we were doing this. There's people <laughs> yeah. up and down okay. the hill. But yeah. I, think, I think Tara was like huffing and puffing or whatever. I mean, it was, it was tough at that moment when we we're going past his house and the neighbor was like, Oh, Hey. And she goes, do you know, that's Axel Rose's house. Right. She just said that. She, yeah. And she did. it was weird. Looks yeah. Weird. And we were like, Oh, no, I had that's, no idea. I, I think I said, that's weird. Yeah. Something <laughs> stupid. Just, yeah. We're like, they're like, he's like direct neighbor. Yeah, it was like his next <laughs> and, and, uh, and I think and I just really thought, heard interrupt you. Think about the fact that Axel Rose's next door neighbor is theoretically telling every passerby that that's his house. <laughs> okay, I don't anyways. know why she was doing that. That was yeah, it was very weird. weird. Yeah. Uh, she must have just known that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We Maybe must have I been giving. Cool? Yeah. We were sweaty and like, uh, our fans put off a vibe, man. That's yeah. What so, we do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then Tara had like, she was past me. Right. And so I didn't, I couldn't see her. And then I'm turning the corner and I was like, oh, we were going to go farther past his house. And I was like, all right. Hey, no intention like, on stopping in front of it. We just were going to bike past it and keep going. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, turning the corner. I'm like, okay, Tara, let's keep going. And I look and I see Tara and I'm looking at her. And she's engaged in conversation with Axl Rose. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, Shit. "What?" And, and Robin, he and, and and Robin yelled at me, "Let's keep going!" And he responds to her. Yeah, before oh, Tara could even say anything before back to me, before I could even respond, I yep. was like, "Let's keep going on the bike ride." He goes, "That's a long bike ride uphill, or something, something like it's pretty hard yeah. that way." And like. Oh, yeah. I like not doing it justice because the first thing I hear when I turn the corner is she could hear him before she saw him. Axel Rose's voice and the voice is so distinctive. I just like was floored. Oh, like shit. it was just like and Tara's standing there, so he's in his yard and he was just in his yard. Like, what was he doing, Tara? Like, so when I turned the corner, he was just standing in his yard and like I make the joke that he was standing in his front yard staring at the sun. But like he was literally standing in his front yard staring at the sun by himself. He was like his arms were crossed and he was looking up and he was just standing there. And it, you know the thing about this house, it is not palatial. It is it, the the property itself is large, but the home, it, it wasn't a large front yard. So he he was standing basically at the sidewalk and behind just a normal you know low yeah. fence. Yeah. You know? So so when I when I come when I'm coming by, I I immediately am like. I mean, it was a lot to process in an instant. Well, oh, yeah. I you know, really knew it was him. And um, I stopped because I, I and and he was looked so strange in, in, his, in his behavior and the staring of the sun thing. The first words out of my mouth to him were, are you OK? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'll tell you, I uh, if if we were able to consider that this was a possibility, Obviously, yeah. you would have gone about it in a whole nother way, but like this came as such a shock. Like, not only did it happen, but Robin wasn't there with me yet. So I'm alone, stumbled <laughs> upon Axel Rose. You know, I'm within, I would say, six feet of the guy. I mean, six foot rule, coronavirus, but he didn't, he didn't mm -hmm. shy away from me at all. I, he yeah, he stayed and stood and talked to me. Um, he kind was my, okay. <laughs> my immediate thought when I, so I see her talking, like, I kind of see her there and, my immediate first thought was like, oh, he's like going to be like, get off my property, fellow kids or whatever, like kind of be mad. But then <laughs> we come up and he's like, the uh, first thing he's like, hey, it's a hard bike ride up. We engaged in conversation with him for like two or three minutes until Tara started crying. I had to be like, we have to go. <laughs> OK, so I was talking to him by myself without Robin for about five minutes. And then when Robin approached, there was several more minutes of conversation. So I think that I talked to him for a, a maybe a little under 10 minutes. The conversation was mundane and it was very surface. I didn't acknowledge for most of the conversation that I knew who he was. So, but as the conversation kept going, I mean, he wasn't cutting us off. No, it he felt wasn't. like he would have stood there and talked to us all afternoon. Yep. It was, it was just everything and every image. We had to shake off ever Axel Rose. Had. 
Eddie, Eddie, of Axl Rose was just like out the window. He was just a normal, nice guy. He treated us with nothing but kindness and interest. He was, he wasn't annoyed by us. And it, I, I did become very overwhelmed at a certain point and, and was losing my composure. And Robin was picking up on that. Wow. So, well, the, okay. So the key moments too, he did this thing where he's, so at first he was like, one one thing is he's just like covered in sunscreen, like out there, just like old man boomer, <laughs> like it is like redhead with sunscreen, which is really cool. His hair is he, bright red. Yeah, and he was wearing a hat, but he did this thing where he was wearing a long sleeve shirt and he rolled up his sleeves, and you could see all of his tattoos that we all, like see, know I so mean, well, I and we were just like that, that cross it was tattoo. Like, wow, that, that is, was pretty stunning. Yeah, yeah, it was super stunning. And um, mm-hmm. and then what did you? And then halfway through or towards the end, Tara goes. I have to admit, I I know who you are, and <laughs> he goes, "You're, and you're sweet." Like, yeah, Aww. is that what he said? And when well, she was like, I, "I just can't hold it anymore. I know who you are, and, and I'm a huge fan." He goes, "Oh, you're so sweet." <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> so, but yeah, like I said, so Robin, Robin could sense that was something like composure, and so you know, we we do want to keep it cool, and it was it was really about to fall apart. So yeah. Uh, um, yeah. she she's like, well, you know, we got to keep going on our bike ride, and I mean, he was literally like, maybe I'll see you on the way back down. Like the guy, it was like he didn't want us to leave. Yeah, and I, I thought we'd our- maybe see him on the way back down. We thought we would. Uh, I think we took too long. It was about an hour before we came back down because we had to get out of his range of vision and sound to to pull over and basically debrief like on what debrief. The fuck had just happened. But like, <laughs> I, I mean, like the biggest takeaways from it were the guy. The guy was isolated and lonely, and I it was like he hadn't talked to another person in a really long time. He's not That's known being with him. friendly to people. Well, we so know he's I, got whiskey, Dijon, and what's the other cat? Dexter. And Dexter. Yeah, he was up there in his Malibu bluff house with his three cats, Whiskey, Dijon, and Dexter. You know, it's it's six months into the pandemic. Um, I think it was, I think he felt, I think he liked seeing a couple new faces to just chat with. And, and, you know, like, I would have, I would have felt the same way. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was cool. Probably the fact that you didn't come up screaming and crying and all that other bullshit. And I'd never, we never took out our phones to take pictures. I mean, like, you've lived in LA too long to do. Yeah, we we encounter, we encounter celebrities constantly, huge ones. I mean, it's, it's a very normal part of living, especially in the, in the neighborhoods we live in. Um, But I mean, Axl Rose is as big, as, as big as a celebrity as you can get. It, yeah. Not only to us, not only to us, but I think in general. So, um, yeah, People it was. Got, so it was incomparable. He's lived in that house for thirty years, twenty five years, years or something. He's lived in the years. same I mean, house. It's twenty twenty one. Estrange was filmed there, so that's twenty nine years minimum. Yeah, that he's lived there, and like, it's uh, he's got to be. We've talked about like, there's got to be a Starbucks down the street that he goes to every day. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be like a circle of people that see his, Axl his Rose just routine in Malibu for thirty yeah, years. Malibu is a small town. Now, yeah. it's filled with, you know, A-list celebrities. So it, yeah. the, the Starbucks employees at the Malibu Starbucks, they see Axl Rose. They see, you know, Brad Pitt. They they see Dan Ziggler. is, out, is there. out there doxing Beaver. him every so, day. You know, I actually think heck? on the scale of Malibu celebrities, like Axl Rose might be kind of low compared to like some other people that live out there. But um, that actually makes sense because it would explain why he knows and hangs out with Nicolas Cage. Oh, oh, does he? I don't think I knew. I mean, that makes oh, yeah, they're, complete yeah, yeah. sense that they're friends. That's just like very weird dudes. But um, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I've always I've heard Nick Cage is like broke these days. I don't know if Nick Cage could afford to live in Malibu anymore. Oh yeah, I, didn't I also think of just that. saw Me that he got the the time to a twenty five year old. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Nick I forgot Cage, about yeah. Vegas wedding. Good for him. Huh. Good for He's him. Stealing her blood too. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Still your blood. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot he's a vampire. I forgot about that. Yeah, you see, you know these Hollywood people are like I need the blood of the yoth. <laughs> That's um, I thought that was Hillary Clinton and QAnon. Just all the QAnon. um. Well, That's see when Hillary, it's the, it's different when Hillary does it because it works. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> see, Bill, Bill draws a man with his charm. Oh, and God. then and then <laughs> and then Hillary comes in and eats him. That's he the eats She's trying to beat some. Yes, eat some. Uh, now, see, what happened with Monica Lewinsky was is somebody else came to the door before they could finish. 
and uh, somebody out there, I need to quit talking. Like, somebody's going to believe that shit eventually. And that's, that's just the problem. Like, you can't really, like, make up stuff on the internet anymore because some, like, congresswoman from Georgia will believe it. Oh I'm going to start gosh. doing these in this voice and say, listen here, folks. It's clear as day. <laughs> we see it happening. <laughs> Something about gay frogs. So, so, gay frogs. Uh, we, I, and I always, and please, I'm going to like, let me say this, Robin. I always, always include this part of the story. When I tell the story, on the way back, Robin wanted to stop at this restaurant in Calabasas. And, oh, you know, God, we're, story, we're Tara. reeling. She hates that I have to tell it. No. We're reeling from, from meeting Axel Rose and we stop. Robin wants a, a drink and we get like some food. And this guy, comes it's like social distancing outdoor dining and this guy comes in in a wheelchair and he's like severely disabled physically but like mentally 100% there and he needs assistance with everything along the way it, it, from looking at the menu to like getting out his phone but he was a really like gregarious almost obnoxious guy in a wheelchair with like mini mini arms and hands and feet and legs and so the guy orders nachos and i'm like so the waiter like brings this guy nachos and i remember thinking like how does this guy eat nachos because like they're oh, down God. there and just, like, oh. he ate them oh, by face he face dove them that's so it. he kept like diving <laughs> robin this don't happen this is not funny though because <laughs> that's, that's his reality that there's funny people it that is funny eat meals it is like funny. that I eat, that's how I eat nachos, but I'm a fat fuck, so that's my excuse. <laughs> this guy was comfortable enough to, he told us we were pretty, and even in the presence of two pretty girls, he still face dove into these nachos. <laughs> what are well, his other he, options? At least you know I, I'm sure there are other options, but it was just like, that was I coming off of us. We had met Axl Rose like 30 minutes earlier, so it was just like, I was like, <laughs> this is, I was like, Robin, I'm never fucking coming to Calabasas again. Like, I gotta no, get that, out of here. That place is cool. I'm not gonna, that's a fun place. What was that place called? I'm not gonna say, because that guy's a regular there, and I don't, that guy was. I say so much offensive. That's, like, it's very if, if If I was like cancelable, like people cared enough to cancel me, I would have been canceled a very long time ago by the oh, dumpster. Okay. I say this podcast. Well, this show would also probably, if we were big enough. Oh, to hell yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad so we're on the we... same level there. Okay, guys, we're going to hit pause on our conversation with Tara and Robin from the Nothing Lasts Forever podcast because it goes on for another hour. And we actually watched the Scooby Doo episode featuring Axl Rose. And we're going to bring that to you in its entirety next week on Guns and Radio. However, we did go ahead and review Superman by Duff McKagan with the girls joining us there. And we're going to play that portion of the recording right now. Well, you guys want to listen to Superman by Duff McKagan? We'd love to. Uh, Chris, which version are we going to listen to? The Duff McKagan version or the loaded version? You told me at the beginning, I forgot. Um, doesn't matter. I'm just like I'm trying to think here, like, because... Which one well, sucks for, less as far as quality? Uh, the huh. Duff McKagan version sucks less, I'd say. Okay, then we're going to go with uh, From Beautiful Disease, track three, right? <clears throat> yes. All right, let's take a listen. He just bitch slaps you right from the beginning. I, I don't Ooh. hate that. When did that come out? Uh, Caputo is the stats uh, like guy. 90s, Let me see. Late nineties. Well, beautiful disease was supposed to come out, yeah, around ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. Sounds kind of like that. Yeah, he doesn't do I've any build worse. up. Yeah. Tara, what do you? Um, I don't love it. Because Duff to me is like this is is the punk rocker of the band. It's like I want to hear Duff doing like stuff like he did. Before Guns N' Roses. Well, I think this yeah. is pretty close to it. It's Mm-mm. the 99 version of it. Uh, yeah. Yes. I mean, 99 was a kind of a dark period for music in general. I mean, yeah, a lot, well, of, a lot of new metal and... Uh, we were in a weird boy, conversion. Boy bands, yeah. We were in that mm-hmm. post-grunge era. Yeah, so yeah. considering that it could have sounded way worse during that time. That's for sure. Exactly. That's true. Like, <laughs> I mean, you can look at it as it's ahead of its time because... It sounds more like um, 
What's the band I'm thinking of, Caputo? You always do this. Like, we have that mental thing. Uh, what is the uh, Dave band? Dave Grohl's band. Um, Foo Fighters? Foo Fighters? Yeah, they, they were going there. Oh, you forgot who the Foo Fighters were? Okay. I forgot like the, the name bigot. of them. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, see, I don't is, love that. I don't like that. It yeah. kind of sounds like what is the band that lives in Eagle Rock, Tara? Twenty One Pilots. Imagine Dragons. Imagine Dragons. Oh. That's, that's just my problem. Like that. It's on its way towards that. Yeah. But yeah. Somewhere in like, between. Like mainstream alternative rock. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, For one, maybe it, sometimes it takes a curve. So we're only fifteen seconds in. So we. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like he's getting ready. That buildup is from Attitude. Like, you know, when yeah. they do the... Similar-ish, yeah. You know, I am pretty critical of rock music. So I, I think that that's... Yeah, this is not this is not good music to me. But um, I appreciate what he's doing there. And it is. It's a product of its time. So I can't, can't hate it too much. Uh... I have, I'm going to save my opinion for, for the final thoughts portion. Okay. I try to, but you can usually tell if I, if I, if I like it. Or so is like he it. playing bass on this and singing? No. I think he's playing lead. Yeah. Oh, let me double check yeah, this that. Is Duff, this is Duff front and center. Yeah, he's definitely singing. Yeah. But he's, he, he's got I a good singing he voice. Lead. And, he's uh, doing everything here. No, so. Duff, Duff did all the oh, backing vocals everything. on stage. Oh, I and, forgot. And, yeah, he did everything. He just recorded all of it. He's like a one man band. I don't, I didn't know that. So he, for this, really? it, it was, you know, they were all trying to figure out what the fuck to do. And he would do, they yeah. would just like rent right. studio Post time and re- make yeah. music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, my hit play. Now, before we get into the more instrumental sections here, Caputo, we like to Caputo and I like to dissect some lyrics. Okay. Here. Well, I was so, just thinking about that too. The, so the let's dissect. Some I want to be your Superman. And see if we yeah. can somehow tie it into the November Rain music okay, video. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I also pulled up other songs that came out in '99 that I want to rock songs. I love this concept that you guys have come up with, by the way, <laughs> of making everything canon into that. In yeah. the NRU, yeah. Uh, the the NRU, NRU. That is- NRU over MCU. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, ninety nine was a cool year. Yeah, right, that Chris. was. I was. I lost my virginity that year. Oh god. Hey. Oh, fun. <laughs> Jeez, it's cool. I, that, it was a cool was year. This playing in the background. <laughs> No. And you know what? Really quick, it was on Halloween. And so I grew up in Eugene, Oregon, which had, you know, you go right outside of town. It's very rural. And it was Halloween. I was dressed like a beastie boy. And he <laughs> was a cowboy. I thought it was a Halloween costume. He was just actually an actual cowboy. Oh. Well. I was so thought she was gonna that's tell it, us. that wasn't that wasn't kind of my plan. <laughs> I thought you were gonna tell us that he was dressed like Slash, and then I was thinking we were gonna Oof. Like the therapy session we've been having, right? Throughout right. The episode no, but I was, you know, but I was slash for Halloween this past Halloween, and Robin was Axel Rose, and so was mm-hmm. my sister. So you had two Axels and a slash. Yeah, yeah. It's she like, copied my costume. It was very oh, annoying. Oh, thought it was cute. Come on. <laughs> it's like when three girls are trying to be the Sanderson sisters, and then they get mixed up, and you end up with two of the same one. The who? What? I don't know. What the the Hocus Pocus. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Deep cut. Hope it's I did not know that. I did not know there was a name. Yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah, Sanderson's. Uh, Caputo, give us some lyrics, brother. All right. Yeah, we'll start from the top on this one. So it goes Fate finds a way of picking you up when you're down. I remember okay. everything, and I know for sure. Ain't like it was before. I know I can shut that door. I want to be your Superman. 
Won't you give me your hand so I can show you? Okay. Okay. So I mean, fate Axel is finds a way of better finding... at writing lyrics. I, yeah. no, I mean, I wouldn't say are... arguably. I would yeah, say I, it no, I, would, I, I think I think Axel is a phenomenal uh, songwriter. Shout okay. Out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So fate finds a way when you're down. Yeah. Finding you when you're down. Okay. Yeah, like when sure. you're. Everyone's you know, written at that lyric straight before. into a cake at somebody's wedding, like we've all done at some point. <laughs> <laughs> what I else mean, is? I've discussed the, the the foolery that I've made of myself at various weddings, and why I have I don't get invited to them anymore. <laughs> uh, you're not missing nothing. Why do you want to go see somebody? Oh, I hate I hate a wedding. Life? Hate a wedding. Yeah, I know. Would you guys? That's a question. Would you guys want to go to the November the wedding that happens? It looks boring. No, it's very basic. Yeah. Besides not... the fact that, that rock stars are there, it looks pretty snooze. There's a guy yep. on an accordion. Like, that's pretty yeah, lame. Yeah, there's a saxophone. Yeah, no way. One thing I've learned from hanging out with the people that. And there's I no have... cake because it gets destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the worst fucking part. And I'm the <laughs> bad guy here. <laughs> um, the, the, the thing I've learned about the, the people that I've hung out with is they might have interesting careers that doesn't always necessarily make them interesting people in yeah. real life. Sometimes they could be just like, you know, your best friend that you've known forever and want to talk to you and stuff like Bumblefoot, for example. He, 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 you'd think the way he sat down and talked with us, you'd think we knew him and then followed us around for the rest of the night. You'd think we fucking knew him and we were best friends. Uh, just met the guy. Nice. <laughs> like, and then other times, you know, so you, you get to talking with them and you're like, okay, buddy, what have I gotten myself into? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then you're looking for your first, uh, you know, when you're having that conversation, you don't want to be having with somebody. So you're looking to politely get away from it. <laughs> so you could go back to the bar with your real friends. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, I've been in both sides of that. Uh, Chris, have you got some more you want to add? Um, yeah, I can do another verse here. Um, there there's like a verse and a chorus. Yeah, I'll do another verse here. Uh, let down your hair and move on over next to me. I want to see your skin, beautiful white, soft in the light. We'll just forget the past we can have tonight at last. <laughs> That's some heavy remembering <laughs> reference you can make there. Some, yeah, that, I, I see a yeah, lot of remembering. I, mean, I would say that's a direct pull, yeah. I, say, I mean, it's, I'm cringing. I'm cringing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty bad. The last couple of Duff <laughs> songs. Yeah. The last couple of Duff songs we did are very much just like him See, whining about women. This we tracks never with have... him just like becoming just basic. Isn't he been happily married for 30 yeah, years? Yeah. He was like happily married at this time. No, I think he, got, he was married, I think, in early 90s and he got divorced and then he finally married Susan Holmes, whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah he up. was yeah. married to someone else. I forgot. Um, yeah. yeah. When did he meet Susan Holmes? Yeah. But he was pretty basic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Duff is a basic bro. Or like yeah. he turned into a basic bro. Yeah. And he he would be. He would do that to you. If he was, yeah, if he was born probably in like San Diego instead of Seattle, he would be a surfer <laughs> bro. Yeah. yeah. Right. But now he mountain bikes and like yeah. buys yeah. stocks. Yeah. Yeah, totally. He's he's like a tech bro. He, prob he probably yeah. bought like GameStop. He was probably like he's probably on Wall Street bet. <laughs> <laughs> Way more basic than that. Ugh, God. Ugh. Speaking of cringe, isn't that why isn't that over yet? How is GameStop still happening? I don't get it. Because all of us poor ass people are finally figuring out how to make some goddamn money off of these. <laughs> okay, rich so did you both do GameStop then? No, I didn't do it. I wish I would have known about it in time. I found out about I it and everybody else did. I mean, I'm talking shit about myself. I did. But I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm over here cheering these people on. and like, stick it to them, man. Fuck those people. Fuck the man. Yeah, though. yeah. All right, I'm going to go back in the song. Chris, can we go back in? Yeah, let's get back into it. We're, gonna get way, we're halfway through the shit show. So... <laughs> So this Guitar is him show. playing every instrument. That's crazy. Yeah. Sounds like it. I've, I've heard him do better guitar solos. Chris, when was the last time we liked a Duff song that was on this show? Well, 
you know when the last time we liked a Duff song was? Uh, I think it was like one of the first ones we did. There was one. It was a good one off his first solo album. I can't remember. Oh yeah, it was called "I Love You." That was a pretty good song. Okay. Oh, yeah. God, he's so oy, oy, oy. so pathetic. But yeah. I um, love you, by Duff. I mean, okay. I yeah. I didn't really listen to Guns N' Roses until like recently. Yeah. Oh. So. But I'm starting she to like it. She still sometimes says appetite for destruction. Or appetite of, what do you say? Yeah, appetite I was like, that's just, it. I, I that's the name of the band. Of, or, she says appetite, she gets it wrong like over and over and over again. Well, I've now, I'm now convinced it's an incredible album. I yeah. love it. Yeah, she just discovered Appetite for Destruction like two weeks ago. Oh yeah, not a bad song on that record. Yeah, no, it's, oh. no skips. I can't nope. say the same no for skip. Illusion, but... No. I I think Use Your Illusion 2 holds it together pretty well. The first one, not as much. Well, there's a theory, of, or my theory is that between Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 is that there are, like, a lot of songs that they wrote, recorded, or kind of, like, existed in the Appetite era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those and those are the songs. best songs on Use Your Illusion, yeah. yeah. The, but I mean, the some appetite of the songs one. on so Use Your Illusion, I, right off the song My World, I mean, it's it's maybe the worst Guns N' Roses song. Uh, I was what about, gonna... no, the wor- worst one is the Sympathy for the Devil cover. Actually, oh, that. God, that is god awful. It's yeah. awful. And in Slash's book, he also says he hates it and can't listen to it. I don't know. Have you, have you heard Paul Corn Tobias Shucker? ruined that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Did... Have you heard Corn Shucker yet? No. No. Oh. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> oh, not in front of the ladies. Okay. It's. I'm gonna be enough. Very NSFW right. that song. Where what album Corn is it? Chucker? Or is it from? I mean, is that is that a, like is it like a is it like a penis analogy? It's. Um, it's just, a, oh what's a corn shucker? Just tell us what a corn shucker is. She's a real. Uh, she's a corn shucker. I guess she's a real. Oh, I think fun I get fucker. it. I think Lady. I get it. Do not continue. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's one for you guys to look up you on your own. You get what corn shucker means. I'm, I'm, I think it means I'm tight vagina. Out a little while ago. Is that what it means, guys? <laughs> Very close. What's, Very what do you mean? What else? What, what, what's? Uh, all right. Uh, uh, no, I don't want to tell you. I want vaginas you, on here. I want you to look it up yourself because it's yeah, so we'll much it funnier later. to me when you guys later go. What was that corn song by Guns N' Roses that that weird fat guy on the internet was talking about? <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then you're gonna look it hey. up, and then it's gonna slap you in the face, and then I'm gonna oh, literally. Okay, <laughs> oh, so Maybe. here are some other alternative rock songs that came out in '99, just to like put that song, right? Okay, Nookie. Yeah, was happening there's a in '99. Alternative rock. That's terrible. What's my age again? Was happening. Okay, Yikes. I like that. scar tissue. Oh. Uh, Yeesh. All star. Yeah, these are bad. Bad, 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 bad. Oh so compared to the, the smooth the by Santana, that was this song is pretty good. A huge fucking year. Steal my sunshine. By oh. one. I'm looking at. Yeah, so we had some Red Hot Chili Peppers, Blink One Eighty Two. We're kind of in their Smash pop mouth. thing, and the big Limp Biscuit, Smash Mouth. Yeah, so it was like really like pop rock alternative. What do you guys think about Limp Biscuit? Um. Aside from the fact oh, that our friend tried we, to set me up with DJ Lethal, but he rejected me. Oh. Don't like them. <laughs> in '99, I was like probably into it, but I was a child. Yeah. Oh, we did. So Tara can't. She says that Buckethead and Monkey. She can't. I out theorize that Buckethead, Monkey, and Wes Borland were all the same guy, and it, <laughs> it has not. It has not been disproven. Disproven. But we just recently be. discovered that Wes Borland still remains very hot. Yeah. yeah. And oh, Black Crows are on the charts too, even in '99. Wow! What were the Black Crows doing in '99? Uh, I don't know. An album? Stuff? Only if, what, what album was that off? Oh. Died. Yeah, I don't know that album. Should I buy the Black Crows Shake Your Money Maker box set that they're releasing? No, you have they're really you trying have to get a Black some money. Crows box set. How it's many a Black vinyl. Crows box sets it's vinyl. Do you need? It's ah, Shake Your Money Maker okay. vinyl. It's pretty All cool. Right. Maybe I should. Oh, Gorilla Radio too. We had some Rage Against the Machine. Okay. Yep. Okay. Late, late rage. Okay. Yeah, and then Duff. And his... then this. Yeah. So keep all <laughs> that in mind right now as we dive back into the last sixty Go seconds back. of the song. Oh, okay. <laughs> I 
I would say it's better than Limp Biscuit. I would say it's yeah, better than so. any of the songs she listed. Yes. Yeah. But that isn't saying a lot. Do you think it's better than Smash Mouth All, All Star? I hate that song. Yes. Yeah, it's a terrible song. It is too. Huh? Better than those boy of wonder assholes. Yeah. I Remember do when like they smooth had like a Santana. super spreader event? They like yeah, yeah. people got COVID at their Yeah. yeah. Damn. Oh, Sturgis. Hey, Chris Jericho was there. <laughs> ah, talk is Jericho. We oh, listened to the was... Chris Jericho um, Talk is Jericho episode with Duff. With Duff, yeah. Uh, he's on a lot of them. He's Every recurring. Friday is Joke of the Week with Duff McKagan. Yeah. Uh, what? What? Interesting. So yeah. Duff and Jericho are homies then. Yeah, yeah, every Friday yeah. on the Chris Jericho show, he comes on and tells a dad joke, and that's his whole gimmick. Is he tells a corny. Well, that is so in. fucking he calls cool. In from his Mercer Island mansion or wherever Duff lives. Yeah, I yeah. love that. God, Duff is just yeah. yeah again innocent, basic dad. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cool. All right, final thoughts. You want to go around the board, you guys? And what we do is we we give we 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 say a final piece about our take on the song, and we give it a rating between uh, usually up to five stars maximum. Oh, okay. And this and you're going through all the GNR. Every okay. song by Guns N' Roses, Velvet Revolver, or a solo album by one of the original five. Okay. 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 So nothing that for- like Sorum did. So no like cult stuff counts. No. no. Okay. We would never be able to end this podcast, and we want. To I, you're right. Yeah. yeah, you're already pulling <laughs> from a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, who's... who wants to go first? I'll start because I'm I'm an idiot, and I don't know as, as much of the GNR catalog as the rest of you. So, you know, I didn't think it was awful. I've heard worse. I it's not skip like we were able to make it through the whole thing. Yeah, and I did hate the middle part where all the instruments were going off at the same time. It sounded like fucking. <laughs> yeah, like a like blender. like pots and yeah. pans falling into earthquake. Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> insane in that part. Yeah. But I think I heard like an accordion. Yeah, there he was, was like just, some kind of yeah. You can imagine, you know, he was just having fun. So I think I also just appreciate the innocence of Duff and how he's doing this just out of the pure. He needed to get the music out. And yeah. those stupid lyrics, and he wants to be your Superman. That's cool. The Superman lyric reminds me of Eminem, who I like. <laughs> I was just queuing that up for the yeah. <laughs> and then, so I'm gonna give what it. Does it have to do with Eminem? Eminem had a fa- had a famous love song called Superman. Superman. Never heard yeah. of it. That. Yeah, that's yeah, good. good. It's a great, great Eminem song. And so it reminded me of that. And um, you know, I'll give it a 2.5, maybe 2.75. <laughs> stars here you go i'm gonna play you a sample because surely you've heard this i i think tara missed a lot of mm i've never heard this in my life wow well i'll tell you this tara uh i'm gonna i'm gonna piss off robin a little bit when i say yeah. this but uh uh, I wish I would have missed more Eminem in my life. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> I haven't listened to Eminem in like a decade but and a half. But you do talk about maybe. him a lot. But early Eminem is, was a pretty important part of my life. But then yeah. after anything Eminem that he did after. Eminem was a formative thing for Robin. Like 2006, I probably missed. I well, I probably grew up around that time too. And that's yeah. why I know about it and everything. Pretty uh, cool big. He sold a lot of C's. So you give it a two point uh, seven five. So Tara, what do you give it? I give it. A, I give it two stars, and that's only because of the context that Robin brought up, which was comparing it to other songs of nineteen ninety nine. Good you know, call, hit, by hit the songs. way. So, um, I mean, I, I thought it was awful. I, I, I totally agree, though. What Robin said is like, Guns N' Roses has been over in nineteen ninety nine for about five years, and he, he, of course, he's a musician. He's a professional musician. He's going to want to make music. Um, it probably would have been more interesting if he made that with other musicians that had other input. Um, yeah. But, you know, so two stars. One, oh. it, one compared to Nookie. When not compared to Nookie, <laughs> one star. <laughs> <laughs> well, Caputo, do you want to you wanna go for it again this week like we always do? Uh, I'll just go right now. I'll oh, okay. Do um, you guys normally argue about like, who does this? Uh, who goes first? We rock, paper, scissors for oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah, my video is being a bit iffy right now, so I can't really do that. 
Um, oh, okay. But it's yeah, it's it's a mediocre song. I feel like the last couple of Duff songs we've been doing, like here on the main show and on like Shawcast Saturday, have just been like him like whining about women, and it's like it's getting fucking old already <laughs> by like, the second song. I'm like, bro, you've been like divorced twice by this point. No wonder. He's I, and it's like not like Duff has any problems getting women at, at any point in his life I was ever. Gonna say, you're yeah. tall yeah. and you have abs. You can easily get laid. Yeah, yeah. And beautiful blonde hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But it, it, instrumentally, vibe. it was okay. It wasn't terrible. It was just okay. And like, I think we've covered a couple other songs from this unreleased album too. And they honestly weren't that great. So I've, I think, thankfully, it's Wait, a good thing. This, this album, album was get, unreleased? Yeah, it never got released because of yeah. um, oh, record okay. labels were merging and it just got shelved. So okay. I think it, it ended up leaking. Someone got like a press like from a mm-hmm. copy of it and it ended up leaking somewhere. So that's why we're getting all these here now. But um, yeah, I'm probably going to go along the lines of a two and a half. It's okay at times, but it's also unbearable at times. But it's it's there. It's not like you want to like rip your ears out and be like, oh, it's terrible. You know, it's yeah, you're right. Something you could put on the background and be like, oh, whatever. This is something, you know? Yeah. Not like my world. Oh, <laughs> God. That's not some negative. Ratings. My That's world, I admit, <laughs> it's tough for me to get through my world. If I uh, just put if I put the record on because I have that record on vinyl, I I put it on. You know, I'm not gonna. You don't get up and skip songs when you're listening to a record. So yeah. I was like, okay, I'm like I'm stuck with my world. But yeah, <laughs> if it comes on in my like rotation on Apple Music, I think it happened today actually. I like to show people my world and then talk about it like it's the greatest song of all time, <laughs> and that this is me introducing you to my band. Like Guns N' Roses, my favorite band of all time. You're, you know, like they, they've got songs like, yeah, you know, Paradise City, you know, Sweet Child of Mine. But have you heard my world? <laughs> you, know, you gotta hear this. <laughs> so. I haven't heard it. So we're, yeah. you guys yeah. Will... Yeah. So what you do is, is you come up with a bullshit like story that sounds plausible, but is like extremely interesting. Kind of like how Chinese democracy has a story behind that record. You come up with some kind of bullshit story that's extremely interesting about why this song was created and all this other shit and how great it is and all of its glory and all that good shit. And then you show them the song after you've hooked them. And then... people just look at you like, yeah, it's great, guys. <laughs> cool that's... song. <laughs> oh, that's the point. Yeah. Um, I don't have anything else to add that you guys haven't already said. Um, My rating is probably a two. I like the instrumentals, but nothing else. Yeah. So So I gave it the highest. Did I? Yeah, Yeah, you did. I was being, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't the worst. You don't have to apologize for your opinion on here. We do not have to agree. Yeah. Yeah. We're duffles. We're duffles. Yeah, Robin Robin is just hard-pressed to say a bad thing about Duff. Well, I mean, considering a three is like smack dab in the middle, that's two is a really nice rating. Yeah, well, 2.5 is in the middle. Yeah, she gave a 2.75. That's above average. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I wasn't mm. going into fractions, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and like we do yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, it's a big. There's a lot of songs to cover. They can't all fit on. this big spectrum. Yeah. You know, you gotta figure it out. Well, uh, speaking of which, are you guys ready to spin the wheel and see what we're gonna be listening to next week? Hell yeah. Are you guys Is gonna that be how able? You decide? To... Yeah. Are you guys gonna be able to stick around for GN Extra? Maybe. How long is that? Uh, <laughs> Not yeah. long. We'll make it quick. Probably got a heart out at three six forty five on my end. But... The pie makers. Oh, mud pies. Cool. We can hang out for another ten. God damn it. We got another Duff song, but Oh deep. shit, really? Yeah, we got another Duff song coming up. Next week on the podcast, we're gonna be reviewing Easier Lying by Duff Solo Band Loaded. These guys have a great podcast. Uh, Whether or not you're a GNR fan, I think you would like to hear the show that they do. And there's going to be links in the description so that you can find it really easy. And um, is there anything else you guys want to say before we head out? No, we really enjoyed being on. This was fun to talk with some gunners. Yeah. Hell yeah. (laughs) Hell yeah.
And the conversation is going to continue over in GN Extra. So be sure to go head over there and download that episode. We're going to be hanging out with Tara and Rob just a little while longer. Not much longer, but just a little while longer. But all right. Until next time, I'm Dustin Bones. And I'm Chris Caputo. We will see you here next Monday for another edition of Guns and Radio. Peace.